Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hammer Podcast. Today is October 16th, 2023. Uh, we're starting the podcast back up again. I'm going to be doing it on Mondays and Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I have uh, up on the screen, I have all the social media if you want to get a hold of me. Also on the bottom, the number to get a hold of me if you want to be on the show. Today we have a Rebecca girl from the Rebecca Home for Girls. Her name is Tammy. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, Tammy, go ahead and uh, start from the beginning. So when I was 13, my family, my family moved quite often. We moved uh, probably once a year. And when I was 13, we left Virginia. We'd been there about nine months, and I really liked it there. And it's the first time I felt connected to people and, like, life was fun. So when we moved to California, I went a little crazy and I ran away and I was gone for about a year. And most of the time back then, I'm 57. So back then when you were arrested for being an out of state juvenile, they just put you on a bus to go home and I just get off the bus wherever I wanted. Right. It was like a free ride. But then I was arrested in Texas. And when I was arrested in Texas, I was quartered to Rebecca. I've talked to a few other girls who believe they were court ordered there. I remember going in front of a judge. Uh huh. Um, what year was this? 1978. 78. Okay. So I also remember because the girls told me that they were kind of afraid of me when I was coming in because Roloff had said that I was going to be coming in handcuffed with the police because of my background. There right. were no handcuffs. There were no police. I was on a plane. I did come on a plane. Um, I had no idea what to expect and I didn't really care because I was really good at running away from places I didn't want to be at. <laughs> and an escape artist. My, yeah. <laughs> my first day there, I didn't have a slip. I didn't have hardly anything and I don't know who I'll remember slip check. But you had to have a slip on to go to church and they checked. And when I said I didn't own a slip, that's the first time I got smacked across the mouth. For not having a slip. Right. Huh. Usually they provide those. Well, don't they? I guess no one knew I didn't have one, so that one wasn't provided. One was provided for me after that. Okay. Um. My biggest memory of my first like week, week and a half there is that every day, I don't know how much detail I should get into. Your listeners probably know most of this stuff. Every day we had Bible memorization. Yes. And Brother Cameron would call me out of Bible memorization every day for like the first week, week and a half. And he would take me to Baskin Robbins or he would take me to this barn that I really don't remember much about, except that he'd always want me to sit next to him on the ground in this barn. And I was really good at recognizing inappropriate male behavior. So I would just act really white and stupid and hyper and run around and never sat next to him. Hmm. So after about a week, a week and a half, he didn't call me out of Bible memorization, but he called another new girl out. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I hope she's going to be okay. You didn't take the bait. I He had 300 girls. Why do someone hard? Yeah. Get you the, know? Get the weaker ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um. After being there for a while, I got really, really tired of getting hit. And I started, I just decided I would play along. 
in somewhere in the playing along, I got brainwashed. Hmm. Um, the only really rebellious thing I could do, and I, I think about this now, and I think for two reasons. I think I really wanted to be invisible. And I also think my body was the only real estate I could control. I just stopped eating. Oh, like a hunger strike? I would eat uh, more like it became anorexia. Mm, okay. Um, I would eat a small salad every Friday. That was all I would eat. And I'm sure all the girls there really, really hated me because they changed all the rules around food with me all the time. First it was, you know, you have to get one thing on your tray and I'd get one thing and throw it away. And then it was, you have to get one thing on your tray and eat it. So I'd get one pea. Then it was, you have to get a full tray. You know, it was just constantly changing. Then it was every day after meals, I'd have to go to the office and get licks. (laughs) And eventually they just, I, they'd still call me to the office, but they just stopped licking me because I'm a hundred percent sure they realized there's no way they were going to make me eat. Yeah. Well, like you said, with the brainwashing thing, I mean, when they're constantly putting this stuff in your head and you have roll off servants playing 24 hours a day. Yeah. On the speakers. Yeah. Sometimes. So that. Just... Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, so the brainwashing thing didn't really click until my year was up and I got out and I went back on the streets and I thought this, this is how Rebecca really fucked up my life. So I thought, oh my God, all sins are the same in God's eyes. In Deuteronomy 22, five says <laughs> what it says. And I thought, if I put on a pair of jeans, I'm going to go to hell. Hmm. And I have to put on a pair of jeans because it's all I have. So I might as well just run wild. I might as well just do anything. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm doomed. Well, you could have taken some of those uh, culottes with you. Yeah, right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know they would have allowed me to take them. Well, I, you wouldn't have wanted them anyway. You remember, you remember the red how, one? Yes, how awful those things were. <laughs> Just so unflattering. Yeah. So your anorexia, after you yeah. left, did it continue, or did you have to get help for it? Or I don't exactly know how to answer that. I mean, the, I, I've spent many, many, many years in therapy, and what – my shrink said was it, quote, spontaneously went away, but it came back. It came back very, very strong. I ended up having to have half my colon removed. Oh. Oh. And, you know, I'm just going to say this, and I'm I'm going to say it, and I am judging people. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's fine. But, so my – parents don't like me they've never liked me and I understand that but they did come for my six-month visit and I remember my mother looking at my stepfather and saying there is no way a child can be this skinny and live and they left me there and I never got any medical care Hmm. that's why it, it it hurt you all that yeah yeah hurt you internally it wasn't just not a fun place. It It's interesting to me, too, that where they're trying to, like, save your soul or whatever they're trying to do there, I don't know exactly, has pushed me the furthest I could ever be from a relationship with any kind of God. Yeah, uh a lot of a lot of uh, people that have gone there, some that I've talked to, some still go to church uh, because they still believe. But I never went back when I left. I said, "Nope, if this is the way God is or God's people, yeah. I want nothing to do with it." Right. 
And right. that, what that does, I mean, it basically isolates me from everybody that I used to know, but, you know. You lost your entire community. Yeah. You move forward, keep going. You find, you know, friends come, friends go. That's how it goes. So. Right. So how many years were you there, Tammy? Just one. Just, just one. one. It was, again, I was quartered or there. It was like a sentence. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, with the, with the separation of church and state thing, I can't understand why the courts ordered you to go to a Christian facility. So that makes absolutely no sense to me either. No sense. I don't know how they could, but I was, I was in a little town called Rockwell, Texas. I know it. And they put me in jail, and I wasn't allowed to leave until the plane was ready. So I ha- and I went in front of a judge, and his last name was Wimpy. I remember his last name. <laughs> so Wimpy. I mean, it, I can't imagine it was anything other than that, unless there's some informal kind of thing in Texas where they can just do that. I wonder if he liked hamburgers. Yeah, right. Um, I'm I'm originally from Corpus Christi, so like I said, okay. I was I was a uh, I was a school kid there, but um, yeah. Uh, Cameron, Wiley Cameron, always struck me as just creepy. Just a creepy guy, you know. I have absolutely nothing factual to say about his behavior. All I know is rumors, and the rumors are incredibly creepy. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah. And, and I, you know, I did... Just, yeah, they're creepy. I mean, Bible study with girls in their closets for two hours and things like that. Yeah. And, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a sexual thing. I mean, just him staring at you. Yeah. Or, or just kind of putting his arm on your shoulder. It's like, okay, now you pretty much know what he's thinking, you know. I mean, he doesn't, yeah. have, to, he doesn't have to do it, but he's thinking it. I'm speculating, but, you know. Being a man, yeah, I know how men think. It doesn't matter if they're Christians or not. Yeah. Some of the worst perverts I've ever seen or met have been Christians. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and not to say that everybody is pervert, but the ones that I've known, not all of them, but some of them. So, uh, Faye Cameron, did, did you have any uh, oh, God. runnings so- with her? Here's something very bizarre. When you walk in in the foyer, there's a piano. Right. Or there used to be, there was. And there was a real thick rug in front of that piano. And she wouldn't call me over the intercom to come to the piano. And then I'd have to give her massages. Massages? Massages. She'd lay on the rug, and I'd give her massages. And when when they were over, this is the weird, weirder, weirder part. When they were over, she would make me tell her how much I enjoyed giving her a massage. Oh, demigod and narcissist. Psychopath. Oh, not psychopath. Uh, really, sociopath. Yeah. I, and I don't know what it was with me. I don't know if I was the only girl, but it sure felt like I was the only girl there at the time. Probably not, but it felt like it. I was always on confinement. Confinement is just where you can't have, you can't make eye contact with anyone. Right. And you hang your hair over your head and you're not allowed to talk. And it was always seemed so arbitrary. She'd put me on confinement and take me off and put me on, and I never knew why or if I'd done anything. She, I, I feel like, I feel like she really enjoyed being evil. She enjoyed the power. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Knowing that she had the power to do whatever she wanted to those girls. And if the girls complained or... Said, nobody's uh, going to believe him. Nobody's <laughs> going to believe him because, and and Lester Roloff, 
Uh, I met the the guy once, but listening to his sermons, I mean, he really over exaggerated a lot of stories about the girls. Um, like you said, you were just a runaway, you know. Yeah. Uh, but he would say some of them were drug addicts and alcoholics yeah. and 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 whores and all this stuff and prostitutes, as you would call them, prostitutes. But they weren't nothing. A lot of them were not like that. But he so would, I remember one girl being there that got sent there because her family was so religious, they caught her reading Song of Solomon before she turned 18. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of the Song of Solomon. That was every boy's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was everybody's, uh, every boy's uh, dream of reading. So, so, yeah, most of us were not whores and prostitutes and little murderers or whatever yes that's what he used to call his little murderers yeah yes so um and, and like i said there was some stories where i mean really i mean like i said growing up in texas i was there for almost 30 years you know born and raised the police department the government there they they will execute you there's an assembly line for executing people yeah right yeah um and there was one story that he told, and I can't remember if I told this to somebody else, I probably did, but where he was saying that this one kid that came to anchor, um, he said that the judge came up to him and said, look, he, he murdered uh, somebody, but he doesn't need to go to church, uh, go to jail. He needs to have Jesus in his life. Yeah. Now, I really found that extremely hard yeah. to believe. I mean, some of those stories were just wild, but those people... They bought it, hook, line, and yeah. sinker. So, I mean, if the you... first time I ever spoke about this, uh huh, I never spoke about it. The first time I spoke about it, I was probably in my early thirties, and I remember telling someone about it. And then I, my next thought was, "Oh my God, they're going to come find me. They're going to come get me. They're going to kill me." And it took quite a while for me to dispel myself of that notion and that's more than brainwashing that's very cultish they mind fucked everybody there yeah i mean even some of the girls that uh that come on the podcast now for rebecca they're still scared they're still, they're, they're, yeah. they're in their minds. They're still, you know, sometimes they'll have nightmares. They have flashbacks um, of being there. I mean, that is powerful stuff. I mean, if it's been, set, you know, in the 70s and 80s, and now they're still having these flashbacks, that, that tells you something. Yes, it does. And another, here's another thing I find very interesting is that, I've talked to I've talked to women who were in there at the same time I was and women who were in there at other times but we share weird memories we share them so I'll mention something and they'll have no idea what I'm talking about until I say it and then someone once said to me do you remember raking the carpet and I had no memory of that until she said it and then yes of course we rake the carpet every day I know so we don't, I think collectively we hold the memory, but a single person can't. Right. Right. And I can honestly say that the only, if anything positive came out of that, uh, which wasn't much, but the only thing that was positive for me was it gave me I, I really liked on Wednesdays they would have lima beans at the come and dine. I don't remember that. Every Wednesday they give you a big old bowl of lima beans. And at first I hated it, but I grew to love them and I still eat them to this day. So. Did you have peanut butter on Fridays, I think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I had to wear the blue shirt and the and the tie with the American flags on it. Yeah. And uh, on on. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, it was a blue shirt. And then on Wednesday, it was a white shirt because that was church. Right. Okay. So, and we went the the ACE paces. So, 
Yep. Uh, but take heart, Tammy. Uh, they're not. Uh, the Rebecca Home for Girls is no longer there. It's not even in uh, in the Florida either. It's gone. Completely gone. Completely. Okay. Okay. The only the only thing they have now is the City of Refuge, right? And the Jubilee Home, but those are for adult adult people. So they they don't deal with kids anymore, and I don't even think that um, uh, the roll off enterprise is even there anymore. I think it was taken over by somebody else because uh, the regeneration reservation and the roll off enterprises are now located in Arizona. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, they got out of Texas. I'm sure they they had the government after them, and of course the Camerons. Uh, Faye Cameron was banned from teaching in Texas, yeah. so she left. Uh, she went back to Georgia, and Wiley Cameron died a horrible death. I so, know. <laughs> you heard about that? I heard about that in a welding fire. Yes, a welding fire. <laughs> yep, it arced, his, it arced his ring and caught his clothes on fire. Yeah. So it's very ironic because I remember listening to a sermon from him talking about. Uh, the rich man and Lazarus. Yes. And uh, he was talking about how the rich man was in hell, and he wanted Lazarus to dip the, you know, finger his finger in water and cool his tongue, and he yeah. ended up dying in a fire. So it yeah. was quite quite ironic. Yeah. Irony. It's a bitch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to. I am sure, and I don't know if you had this particular torture. Did you have to kneel? Uh, no. Okay. Didn't have to kneel. We had to kneel, and I know that doesn't sound like much, but it's one of the most painful things I've been through in my life. And we had to kneel all the time. I would kneel until I threw up or passed out, and then I was allowed up. But the worst night was one night somebody did something, God knows what. We all knelt all night long. And would not they would not let us up, but they would bring a trash can to put to, between our legs if we had to pee. Well, I'm telling you, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed I know watching they did. people suffer, and just they they enjoyed humiliating us. And you're right, watching us suffer. I mean, there was no spanking, quote unquote. There were. Faye Cameron would pick up whatever was on her desk and hit you across the face with it. The principal of the school, I believe his name was Davidson. Or was it Stevers? I did I didn't know there was a principal of the school. Yes, he was he's the one that gave us licks. Okay. And he had this gigantic paddle with three holes in yeah. it. Yeah. That was just for formal <laughs> Oh, that that was so he could swing harder and faster. Yeah. Less resistance. Yeah, we had that one too, but that was for like the Friday night licks for your demerits. <laughs> demerits, yes. That little yellow slip that you gave, it said licks. Yeah. Going sideways, yep, I remember that. So, but um, as far as seeing the, the other girls there i mean did you get into a routine pretty much and so excuse were, me were you allowed to talk to the girl you know have conversations with the other girls when i so i can't tell you how far how long i'd been in rebecca but i did become a helper and that was probably the most liberating thing ever because Helpers talk to each other. We really talk to each other. It wasn't religious. It was in the middle of the night. You could say, fuck. You could say whatever you wanted. <laughs> that was, that's, I think, what really saved my life was becoming a helper and realizing the helpers were not brainwashed. Yeah. And of course, you were, you know, you were a helper and a masseuse 
Well, yeah, sometime. I have a suit. <laughs> so, um, was was um, Faye, Faye, Faye wasn't living there. She didn't have yes. a... Oh, she was. They had an apartment. They had an apartment in the dorm. Oh. And Miss Barrett lived there, too. Miss Barrett. She was creepy. Miss Barrett. I don't remember. Oh, she was just mean. I remember Miss Barrett. I do. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with Wiley Cameron living there, I mean, that could give him full reign to... 24-hour access. Yeah. And, no and he had it. Yeah, and no telling. And like I said, I'm just speculating, but who knows how many girls he may have touched, you know, and they didn't say anything. I mean... I, I would guess a lot of them. I mean, he went from me realizing he'd have to work at it to another girl in a week. Yeah, like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. You know, got your pick. Yeah, well, like I said, um, he's paying for it now. I mean, I don't know if we believe in a heaven or a hell, but if there, if there is a hell for him to go to, I'm sure he's there. And I know this is cruel, and I don't care. I'm happy he died the way he died. It just makes me laugh. Yeah. I mean, uh, from what I read, the article that I read, he said, uh, they said it said that he didn't want morphine. Oh, Okay. And he was burned over 80% of his body. But it, it got to the point where he was just passing out from the pain, so they just gave him morphine yeah. anyway, you know. Okay. But he he died, I think, two weeks later. Pulled the plug. I always knew that uh, fake Cameron would be the death of him. That ring, <laughs> that ring arced, you know. So. Yes. But, and, uh, of course, Roloff, um... Always had his uh, favorites as well. Uh, he did. He absolutely did. And I really, I may have met him a few times. But he is, my big beef is not with him. I hate him. I don't like him. But he never hit me. He never, you know, he's not the one that was right in front of me pulling my hair until I went down. <laughs> right. Um. Roloff was kind of different, I think, as far as him and Wiley Cameron. Wiley Cameron was more of the... He, he, Wiley Cameron reminded me of the kind of guy that would walk around with a leisure suit, with a silk shirt, with the, you know... Yeah, uh, absolutely, dog, uh, and a cowboy hat. And, and the chains, yeah, around his neck. Yeah, he reminded me of that kind of guy. Roloff reminded me, kind of reminded me of uh, a farm kid who... If he saw a naked woman, he wouldn't know what to do with it. No, he wouldn't, yeah. So there were two totally different guys. But then again, Roloff was always out proselytizing for his church. Well, so he didn't mind commodifying children for money. <laughs> That's true. He basically pimped them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you also had to do the... Uh, the uh, testimony, of course. That still haunts me. It really still haunts me. I I do have one of those out there somewhere. <laughs> I do. I do. And, of course, it always started off with, I was defeated. Oh, I think mine started out with Isaiah thirty eight sixteen. I don't know. It's just, yeah, yeah. And I can't believe you want to close this place. I couldn't. I wouldn't be alive without this place. Yeah. Yes. I thank Brother Roloff and yes. and Faye Cameron for all that they're doing. They're doing the Lord's work, blah, blah, blah. While in, inside you're going, please, somebody save me. <laughs> yeah. But there were some girls there who were the real deal. I mean, who were actually converts who believed everything Roloff said. And, of course, those were the ones that were in good standings with the Camerons. They're, they're little snitches, you know what I mean? I know. They're, oh, yeah. Well, you were encouraged to snitch on each other. You were encouraged to hold each other down. You are encouraged to hit each other at certain times. Um, yeah. I talked to one woman. I can't remember her name right now. 
and she was there at the same time I was. And the first thing she said to me was, was I mean to you? I hope I wasn't mean to you. I was mean to so many girls. You got kudos for being mean to each other. They pitted us against each other. Yeah. It was, it was like a, a ring where everybody goes in there and fights with each other. Yeah, yeah. I am sure you've heard this before too, but I want to mention it just because but just because I'm weird, I guess. <laughs> but n- neither I or any other girl the entire time I was there had their period. And I, I can't imagine they weren't drugging us. They could have been. I, I have heard that before. A couple of girls came on here. One was actually from Bethesda. Okay. Uh, that's where... Uh, I guess that was an offshoot of, of Roloff Enterprises, Rebecca. too. Yeah. Yes, Rebecca. For the older girls uh, and the pregnant ones, the pregnant girls. For the, yeah. <clears throat> and she said Well, they that, wouldn't have their period. <laughs> right, but, but she said when she when, after she was after she had the baby, and, of course, they were selling the babies, too. Yes. Um, she, as she said, after she had the baby, you know, it was time to have the period and nothing. Right. And she said that she drank they were they would drink milk and she had milk that tasted like onions um so she's not sure if if some if they were tainting the milk with something that would cause the girls not to have their periods or maybe they were just so scared and they had high anxiety and stressed that they wouldn't have their periods but to have all the girls at one time not have it because usually they sync up. You know, if you got a the bunch of girls together, effect. right? Yeah, they sync up, but they didn't have it at all. None, and, none. And to this day, I still can't figure that out. I remember being forced to drink a glass of goat's milk every morning. I do remember that. I don't. I could only speculate, and I don't care to speculate about why that happened. But it's something my doctor found very, very interesting. Right. It's like it's like what they do with the soldiers. They'll give them something called saltpeter. Yes. Which keeps them from getting aroused. So it could be something like that, for, but for women. I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just speculating, but something definitely happened. Yes. But it looks like Roloff and the Camerons took it to their grave. Maybe not. We'll find out. Maybe not. It would be nice to have somebody who was actually, I mean, exception of Donna, who was there, um, when she talked about how Roloff may have had an illegitimate child with some other woman. Um, okay. Other than that, she's the only one that I know that I talked to that was actually part of the staff. She was actually a Rebecca girl first, and then she married an anchor boy, and they became part of the staff Okay. working at the farm. But she saw a lot of stuff. I mean, like I said, just because they're Christians doesn't mean they, they don't, they're not worldly. Right. So there was, she said there was a lot of drinking, drug use going on over there. Her, her husband then, ex-husband now, was a heroin addict. He was shooting up. So. Okay. In the trailer's. Behind the church. It's your Nothing Road. would surprise me. Nothing yeah. would surprise me. Yeah, it didn't surprise me at all. So. But. Uh, did, did you at least enjoy the food? Well, no. No. <laughs> I didn't eat. <laughs> oh, that's right. Just a salad. <laughs> Just a salad. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. I, I completely. I just. I guess it just. But I did go to the intercoastal. Oh, did you? Yeah. You were on roll. Did you have that experience? No, I did not. Okay. Um. Did you go on uh, roll off's plane? No, I went on a boat, and I was there a weekend, and I fished the whole time and didn't have a shower. I don't. I don't know if that's just you know they wanted free labor. I right. don't know what that was about. 
Probably free labor. Probably. You know, probably. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it, why why clean up the place? You know, I mean, I'm sure they had you were raking the rug. You were, I'm sure some of you were cleaning the toilets and 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 you had to make your beds, of course. And it was a treat, an absolute treat, if you got to clean the tour bus. Why is that? I have no idea. That's oh. how it was. That's how it was sold to us. Hmm. Because I know they used to have a. Back when I was there, they had a general store. That little shack. Right. And we used to go there for twenty-five cents. We got uh, a bag full of a uh, bag full of licorice. So I remember carob. Carob. Yeah. Who's that? Carob. It's like a chocolate substitute. Oh. Okay. I've never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> um, carob. Did they sell that at the general store? or Did they give that to you? They had sold it at that general store, okay. but it, it wasn't a store. It was a shack. Yeah. But it, it said general store on there. It was a big old white It sign. did. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. And, of course, the Come and Dine had that cornucopia of fruit on there. So, but. Oh, I forgot about that until right now. And just now. <laughs> yeah, there, there was uh, even some of the. Even some of the, 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 the kids that were there um, at the elementary school, I remember, because the, the Rebecca girls, you, got, you all would come out the back, down those double stairs, out of the uh, Rebecca home. Yeah. And yeah. You, you would walk over to the school. and you, Single file. Right, single file, heads down. And you would go up the steps, because the Rebecca girls were on the second floor. Right. And I remember some of them, some of them kids that were there, perverts, uh, while the girls are going up the steps. Oh. Yeah. You know where that's going. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, you know, because, you know, it was dresses, dresses all the time. Yeah. So they thought maybe they could probably sneak a peek. But most of those kids that did that were the uh, farm kids. Right. The ones that could do no wrong. I mean,. Well, I almost can't blame them. I almost can't. They didn't have a Playboy. Yeah, that's true. They didn't have a Playboy. You know, at that age, the hormones are, are raging, yeah. you know. So I, I, I fully understand it. But, you know, if it was any one of us city kids that did it, you know, we'd, been we'd, to we'd have licks. You yeah. know, our parents would be told. My dad was very strict when it came to that. I would have got my ass beat. So, but... Just one of those things. But uh, like I said, uh, I was there two years. And Ooh. after that, I went to public school after that. So That must have been a huge shock. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember some of the teachers. I could still see their faces. Mrs. Davidson, Miss Stagel, Brother Martin. Brother Martin was a complete pervert. Oh. Um, it was rumored, and I don't know if the rumor is true, so that's why I'm calling it a rumor, that he molested one of the uh, elementary girls, and he was kicked off the farm. That's what I heard. That's the rumor. I don't know if it's true. Okay. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was. And it wouldn't surprise me that they covered it up. Yep. Yes. A lot of stuff happened over there. Uh and like I said, it, it, it took a long time. Like, uh, there's a girl that, uh, a lady that came on. Her name is Barbara. Um, it took this long. You know what I mean? Yeah, she I was did. there. She was there in the 70s, and she just just couldn't talk about it, you know, until now, which is great. Just to get it out there. Um, yeah. And the thing is, there's a lot of spinoffs, you could say, of roll-off. Yeah. You have, um, well, some of those, some of them went to Florida, New Beginnings, yeah. um, Agape, uh, some of those, uh, some of, I mean, it wasn't a roll off home, but the, the people that ran the place, they emulated 
his teachings. He even I had, used to. Yes. Ooh, sorry, go ahead. He, he even had a dorm, the Roloff dorm. Yeah. There. Named after. Yes. I used to really love to watch Intervention, that TV show. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I used to and watch it too. There was one woman on there who was sent, and it wasn't a Roloff home, but it was similar. It was some, I don't remember, but it was the same kind of treatment. And some someone was yelling at her and saying, you know, what do you want? It's over. It happened. There's nothing we can do about it. What do you want? And I thought, I just want someone to tell me I'm sorry. Close that chapter in your life, you know. Yeah. If so I think I think when you're not heard and we had generations of kids not being heard when you're not heard you have two choices. You can just shut the hell up or you can get really really loud. And I think we felt like we had to shut the hell up for a long long time. And people of your generation are starting to get really, really loud, and I thank you, and I appreciate it. Yes. Yes, it's it's nice that they're coming out, and, like, some of these, uh, I've had some that were at these homes just years ago. I mean, two, three years ago. So, yeah. So uh, they're now coming out earlier, and some of them are getting shut down. But the problem is, if it shuts down, three more pop up somewhere else right right it's like playing a game of whack-a-mole yeah it's hard to well, close these thank places you for down. doing what you're doing when i first started this <clears throat> excuse me when i first started this uh i was looking for some girls from rebecca to try and get that story out there because i figured it was time it was time to get that story out being that 90% of the people that were there are, are dead. So. Yeah. And not to not to piss piss on the grave or anything, but. I they, would be the first in line for a yeah. group piss on those graves. Yeah, well, well, what I was saying was not to piss on the grave, but I would I would piss on the grave, you know. Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> I know that Roloff, his, his, did you, did you go, well, no, you weren't there because he died in 82 you know, I was out. Yeah, and I went to the uh, the graduation ceremony that he had, and um, he was there with a Marine called, uh, his name was Kleeb McLaren. I don't know if you remember him or not. He was always no. in the Marine Corps outfit. No. No? It must have been in the early 80s then. But, yeah, he's still a hardcore roll off you know. So, but, yeah. so how has, how have things been since? I mean, how is your life now, Tammy? So, I, all I've ever aspired to be is normal. I just wanted to be normal. <laughs> and... I look pretty normal. I act pretty normal. And I am, for the most part, pretty normal. But it takes me... What I tell people is that I might choose not to tell you something right now, but I don't have any... Li I don't lie, you know? Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie. I just might not choose to tell you something right now. And I feel like... If I talk about any aspect of my past with anyone, then they won't see me as normal any longer. So things kind of dribble out. I tell people that I went to private school and then it becomes reform school. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes Rebecca. <laughs> It slowly morphs into something yeah. worse. 
I told you I went to private school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't lie. It was a private school. No. Right. <laughs> Technically speaking. So, but... It's, it, it's, and you know this, it's hard because people look at you like you have three heads. No one's heard of anything like it. Yeah, but they're starting to hear it now. Yes. Because a lot of these other places that emulate Roloff's teachings have been getting in trouble for exactly the same things that happened to Roloff. The the fighting, the uh, holding the people down. Right. You know, lock up. Lock up, punching them. I mean, kicking them, anything. They're, they're doing the same things. And it's always... I would say for the most part, 98% of them, it's always the Christian reform schools or the yes. Christian schools. Well, I remember reading something, and I want to say it was like 1980. It could have been 79, it could have been 81, 82, in the newspaper about a young man who, and I don't remember the home 100%, but I think he was at the lighthouse. And... His mom came and got him early, and he wouldn't talk, and he, he just wouldn't talk. He wouldn't talk to her. She took him to the doctor, and the doctor examined him and then closed the door and talked to him for a long time, and the doctor came out and looked at his... I read this in the newspaper, the Dallas Morning News. The doctor came out and looked at his mother and said, we have to call the police. Your son has been tortured. Mm. I mean, you read that in the paper, and nobody pays attention. No, not, probably nothing became of it, huh? I'm sure nothing did. I mean, Roloff was raking in the dough. Yeah. Raking it in. Of course, from what I read, two, two and a half million a year, which back then was... A lot a of money. A lot of money. Yes. And... Uh, who knows how much parents paid a month or how much the state paid for me. And Roloff was quite the actor, too. I mean, sometimes he would, at the very end, when he would, when he would give the altar call. And That's of course, when we all had to go down and kneel? Yes. Do you remember the song? Just, if you started, I'll remember it. Just as I am, without one Just plea. as I am. Yes. For his blood was shed for me, or something like that. And all Do you the remember girls... having, having yes. to sing before we ate? Vaguely. Okay. I do remember, though. And <clears throat> most of the time it was uh, Come and Dine or uh, Living by Faith. That was the theme Living song. By faith. That was the theme yeah. song of the Roll Off Enterprises, <laughs> Living by Faith. Okay. And of course, I would hear his other songs that Roll Off would sing um, The Stranger, Blue Galilee. Um, some of his stuff. He was always he was always that org, organ. He was always the organ. He was, someone was playing, and he would sing. He didn't believe in the drums. He didn't believe in anything else. That's all satanic. You know what I remember? I was was it John Lennon that got shot back then? Nineteen eighty. Yes. One of the Beatles. Yeah, it was John Lennon. So I remember him doing a sermon on that. And I remember thinking, how the fuck does he know John Lennon got shot? How does he know who John Lennon is? He shouldn't know this stuff. Yeah, you know, so sometimes he would, you know, in order to be a liar, Tammy, you have to have a really good memory. Okay. Because you have to remember the things that you lied about. Okay. And I remember one sermon he was giving where he said, all I need, everything that I need or want is in this book. The King James Bible. I don't need anything else. I don't need no books. I don't need no newspapers, magazines, nothing. Yeah. Or those three sewer lines, he called them, the, the three television stations. Yeah. And then a couple months later in another sermon, he would go, you know, I read this article in the newspaper. Right, right. It's like, okay, didn't you just say you didn't read the newspaper? Oh, you, you get everything out of this book, you know? So that's, that's how he was. That's how you could tell he was full of shit. But of course, people. Didn't. I don't know why. Oh. I don't know how I held on to it. I don't know how, and I don't know why. But I still have my Bible from then. 
Oh, I don't know what happened to mine. Okay. It was a nice Bible. It was, they, they, <laughs> they spent some money on it. Um, yeah. But, of course... They probably got him donated. <laughs> probably. Of course, you know, he said that the uh, uh, Satan's Bible is the new King James Version, the version right. that came out. That's Satan's Bible. Right. It's the same thing. It's just worded different. It's just got different right. words. That's it. Yeah, but you, know, you forget that in Revelation it says you can't change one right. word. Right. They don't say yeah. thee, thou, or thine anymore, he yeah. said. So, but... Did you ever hear about Big Sandy? What happened there? I don't know who that is. Well, Big Sandy was a uh, uh, a school in Texas. Oh um, no, I yeah, it got a lot to do with uh, bribes and and I mean he was in, had his fingers in a whole bunch of pies. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance, just look up roll off Big Sandy. Okay, uh, I will. There's is, so many of them. Yes. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know Barbara? Barbara. Yeah. She's so a... I can tell you, I can, there is a YouTube video. Uh-huh. I don't know when it was put on YouTube and it's brother Roloff messing around with the little kid named Lisa Jackson. And I was there when she was there. We were friends. I, I haven't seen that. I have not seen that video. Just Google Roloff and Lisa Jackson and it's on YouTube. Okay. I remember he would, uh, there were a few uh, black people there. I remember that. Only one. I remember a black girl named Heidi, and that was it. What was it? Roloff, what was that girl's name? Lisa? Lisa Jackson. Lisa Jackson, okay. I'm writing it down. Um, And, of course, he would, uh, Mexican-Americans, he would call them lubricanos. Yes. Yes, you remember that. Might yes. as well just call them greasers. I mean, it's right. the same thing. Um, and, of course, a lot of the, uh, like, there were some black boys at the uh, Intercoastal Canal. and With the watermelon? Yes, with the watermelon. Oh, how offensive is that? Oh. And, of course, the yearbook, there was a yearbook. It was a guy... I think his name is Tom Stevers, I think is what his name was. But he had he had the South is gonna rise again. Oh wow. Well. Yeah, I was like, oh I didn't get a yearbook. I didn't want a yearbook. No. I was like, no, no. <laughs> it's still I think my brother has the yearbook from eighty two. Yeah. But um yeah. Like I said, not a lot of good memories, some. But mostly just stuff I just want to block out. But it's hard right. to because it just comes flooding back. You try to suppress it and it just. I mean, to remember after all these years, it's been what, 82, 92, almost 40 years. I know. I can still remember the music. I can still sing the songs word for word. You know? I know. The, I do know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> The brain, the brainwashing was, yeah. was. Uh, I mean, it didn't stick with me. I mean, I remember a, a lot of things, but of course, when it comes to the Bible, I, they had, we had to read a, you know, a chapter a week, and if we didn't, we got demerits. Of course, yeah, we had to memorize it. So, there was one, one more thing. He said that there was. I remember Roloff saying this in a sermon. He said there was a kid who was five years old who memorized the entire Bible. And when I heard that, I'm like, okay, I definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, this man is full of shit. Right. There's no way a five-year-old would be able to memorize all 66 books. He couldn't read it. Yeah, exactly. But the people ate it up. So... But is there anything else, Tammy, you would like to add that we didn't No, I just touch really on? want to thank you again for doing what you're doing. It's my pleasure. Um, like I said, I was there. I didn't have the same experiences as you did or some of the other Rebecca girls. They were a lot worse than mine. But Nobody has the quarter on misery. I'm sure you went through hell. It was, yeah, it was, it was 
I, I was on the first level of hell. The Rebecca okay. girls, the Rebecca girls were on the seventh level of hell. Okay. And and the and the 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 anchor in the lighthouse, they were on the tenth level of hell. Yeah, yeah. Some of those guys really got their asses beat. Yeah. So, but the people that survived and are still here today, hats off to them. So, but thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for being on, Tammy. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Um, bye. All right. Bye. All right, everybody. I want to thank Tammy for coming on once again. Um, if you have any questions, uh, the YouTube channel, you can leave a comment. Um, if you want to be on the podcast, it's 920-777-1697. And of course, I want to talk to, if anybody knows G-Man, G-Man is, uh, he's with Preaching to the Choir Ministries. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, if you know him, please tell him that I would like for him to come on this podcast to talk about the Hebrew Israelites. And of course, he was talking about uh, prison reform. I would like to talk to him about that. So if you know him, please have him come on. Text me on there. So like I said, uh, we're going to be doing these podcasts again. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. If you want to be on, please get a hold of me, either through the phone or through the email. Let me put the social media page back up here again. Um, on Facebook, on uh, Gmail, on Twitter, and on Reddit. So a whole bunch of ways to get a hold of me. All right? So for the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.